Dr. Peter Hotez now, co-director of the Center for Vaccine Development at Texas Children's Hospital. Doctor, great to see you again. We've, we've reviewed the Pfizer report here and the numbers really look fantastic. W what of this, kids being vaccinated before next school year, is that realistic? Yeah, I think it is. Um, I mean, the study is not that big. It's about 1,200 uh, uh, adolescents, uh, 12 to 15, in the vaccination group and a similar number in the placebo group. And what it showed is there were 18 cases of COVID in the placebo group and zero in the vaccinated group. That's how you got to the 100%. I would guess as you get to much larger studies, it'll probably come down a little bit similar. It'll probably be similar to the very, ex to very high level of protection that we see in, in adults. So the question is, where do we go from here? I think there's a few reasons to vaccinate adolescents. We are seeing adolescents go into pediatric intensive care units. They are getting sick, especially those with underlying risk factors. And as you point out, uh, if we're going to uh, actually interrupt virus transmission, we have to get to 80, 85 percent of the population vaccinated now that we have the B117 variant, which is so highly transmissible. And I think we could do that by including adolescents. And, and now we're going to see a pretty safe fall school year for middle schools, junior high schools and high schools because the students will be vaccinated, the teachers and staff. So that's there's a lot to look forward to because of this news. Dr. Hotez, I talked to a Jersey soccer mom who works here at CNBC just yesterday and she said, you know, I've got a 16 year old, a 12 year old, I mean, 13 year old. I don't know. I, I think that they probably need to wait to that soccer mom and millions across the country. What do you say? Yeah, there's going to be a have to be a lot of public communication and a lot of advocacy that needs to be done because parents are going to be a bit skittish about, or at least some parents, about a brand new uh, mRNA technology for, uh, for their kids. So that's something that a uh, number of us have anticipated. So there's going to have to be a, a lot of discussion. So it may take some time. You may not see that full level of compliance, uh, at least for the first few months. And but I think it will grow organically as we see kids get vaccinated with un, no untoward effect. Doctor, over the past year, we've looked to Europe to see what's coming next. Well, I look at France now and there's another lockdown. You look at Brazil. Hospitalizations are so bad. It's, it's possible that their entire health care system is going to be crushed. Do we face the possibility of this? Or are we doing enough and acting correctly enough to where we won't have to face this? The big difference is we are moving at a much faster pace of vaccinating. It's still not where I'd like it to be. We've got now about a third of, uh, we're getting towards a third of the uh, U.S. population with a single dose of uh, vaccines. The, the good news is that by the summer, I think we could get to uh, a very high percentage, certainly more than half, maybe 75 percent of adults vaccinated, and that's going to really slow down transmission. The problem is we're in a race with this B117 variant, which is so aggressive. Uh, it's more transmissible, higher mortality rates, higher hospitalization rates. And we're also seeing, hearing anecdotally, we don't have the hard evidence yet, but it's looking that way that up in you know Wisconsin, Minnesota, we're starting to see young adults get very sick as well because mm -hmm. of the B117 variant. Tell you what, being fully vaccinated feels mighty good. If you can get it, get it. Dr. Hotez, thank you. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.